I hope you saw what I was trying to do there. I mean, to try and illustrate luxury because we're going into one of the most luxurious parts of Portugal. Actually, not just the Algarve, the whole of Portugal. So there's this place called Quinta do Lago. It basically means the farm of the lake. That was established over 50 years ago. And it is the hallmark of luxury. Average price of a villa here is like four and a half million euros. So you can understand what kind of people live here. You know, celebrities, footballers, Formula One drivers, etc, etc. And I got the chance to go and spend the night there. So this is more of like a fun thing to show you what's around here. And it's actually amazing to drive through here and see what, what life's like in Kinder Lago. Because to be honest, I don't experience it that often. Um, and it's it's quite a fascinating thing. So the location of Quinta del Lago is basically just west of Faro Airport, as you can see. And um, you can get there pretty easy. It's like 20 minutes. And it's located between Villa Mora and Faro and Lule. So it's all around this triangle. And they actually call the Golden Triangle, which is Villa Mora, Almancil, and Quinta del Lago and Valdelobo. That's four. But Quinta del Lago and Valdelobo are considered sort of one resorty area on the triangle. It's a bit odd, isn't it? This Q roundabout forms the opening of Quinta del Lago. Quinta shopping is described as a luxury boutique mall, like well located right there. You know, it offers a wide range of luxury stores representing well-known international and national brands. And you can relax there and have a nice little breakfast, lunch, dinner, evening cocktail, whatever. And it's quite a swanky environment. And there's some really cool pubs. There's like, um, there's the Cheeky Pub. And the melting pot, which are great sort of uh, meeting points and great place to grab a drink as, as watch the sun go down. So lots to do. Let me just jump in here quickly and say that please don't say Quinta de Lago. Because Quinta de Lago just makes you sound like a foreigner. And if you want to try and blend in, just say Quinta. All right. Now, um, just on the other side of Quinta de Lago, there's Bougainvillea Plaza, which is another, resort, uh, another shopping center. And um, yeah, it's filled with lots of real estate agents and all kinds of things and shops and restaurants and a supermarket. And then over the road is this incredible hotel called the Conrad Hotel. People describe it as a six star, but there's obviously nothing. It's just, it's really luxurious, it really is. So check it out if you can. But we're not sleeping here. We're going to go local, courtesy of a fantastic villa management company called Dream Properties. But while we're up here, let me point out a few of Quinta de Lago's landmark developments. Now over here on the right is Pinheiros Altus, which is another golf, co golf course as well as a residential development. As you're coming down the main road, Four Seasons Country Club, where I play squash with my swanky buddy sometimes. Four Seasons Fairways. Wyndham Grand Algarve, where you can actually get yourself a golden visa, which is quite interesting. Talk about that. If, you, if you're interested in that, just give me a call on algarveaddicts.com forward slash contact. Martignol, Quinta Lago Family Resort. You may recall I stayed with Martignol in Sagres, so they have quite a few. They've got a few properties up in Lisbon as well. Hotel Quinta de Lago, which is the original hotel. Bovino Restaurant. And Casa Velha, which was, Casa Velha is a restaurant which was um, converted from the original farmhouse back in 1972. And then we're heading down to Casa do Lago, a really lovely restaurant right on the, on the lake. The Shack, which is a great bar and restaurant on the, on the lake. And then we head up to the campus, which is this premier um, sports resort, basically. And it's, it's designed for international teams to come over and train. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a second. Right now we're heading down to Varandas do Lago, which is actually not in Quinta do Lago. It's in the area between Quinta do Lago and Valdelobo, which I'll explain as well shortly. Morning, guys. Well, actually, I'm not allowed to say guys. Apparently, it's a bad thing. Somebody commented and said, I'm a woman and I feel so insulted that I say guys all the time. So, Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We're here in Quinta Lago, and uh, I'm just going to visit this incredible place. Mm. 
All right, just let's sit down over here and uh, enjoy this incredible spot. So I just want to chat to you a little bit about what this thing is. So basically, do you know, a villa management company approached me and they said, look, we've got all these places, we've actually got 87 properties in Kintalago. Would you like to go and take a video of them? I said, yeah, sure, I'd love to. So we started this collaboration. Um, but right now, I'm just going to tour this little house quickly so you can see what... And, you know, we're coming here for the night. Normally, obviously, you'd come for a week or something on holiday. Or if you are buying a house in the area, you can get these guys to actually manage your house for you. And they manage 87 houses, like I said before. So my wife and my daughter are joining me later. I'm going to go pick Izzy up from school. My, my wife's going to come down a little bit after she's finished work. And we're going to go out for a beautiful dinner here in Quintalago and just show you exactly what Quintalago has to offer. She left us some Monte de Pesaguinha, which I had the other night, which is really nice. And also some coffee and things like that, which is nice. Moving into the dining room with a spectacular table. Love this table. Really is big enough for lounge area. Let's go right around this lounge area. Let's go outside. There's a braai, proper barbecue, it's very important. Man. Oh, look at automatic lights. Um, there is a guest bedroom. Right, it's approaching lunchtime and I've organized with my buddy Nick, Nick and Nick, how cool is that, to have lunch at Dano's in the campus sports resort. But now that's in Quintero and I am literally backing onto it from my villa here that I'm spending the night in, in Ferranzas de Lago. But because Quintero Lago is like a self-contained area, I have to drive all the way out, check this, I have to drive all the way out and then all the way back in just to go next door for lunch. How's it going, Nick? Hi, Nick. Hey, Nick. All right? <laughs> okay, so I promised you we were going to meet my mate Nick. Okay, and here he is. And um, I just want to ask you, um, Nick, I'll sit over here. Hi. <laughs> How's it going? Um, this is cozy. This is cozy. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You always have to cozy up when it's the camera. I just want to ask you a little bit about, because we've got Quintalago on the one side and we've got Valdelobo on the other side. Yeah. And you live smack bang in the middle at another place. So yeah, I live in uh, Quinta Salinas, which is, I suppose, geographically sandwiched right between Vadalobo and Quinta de Lago. Um, I suppose the primary upside of it is, is that you don't get the crazy uh, estate charges that you have on the other side. There's probably, what, seven sort of distinct um, sort of condominiums, I suppose, or areas um, inside that. So we've got Verandas de Lago, uh, there's us, obviously, Quinta Salinas, there's Quinta de Mar, Ooh, Villas Alves, Quinta Jacintina, or Jacinta, or however you pronounce it. Um, sort of everyone's unique in terms of the way they, what they are, and some are just um, villas, some are apartments, some are apartments and townhouses, and we're we're that. Um, but I guess look, you get the best of both worlds because you're in between the two. We get serviced by the Quinta sort of estate, the Infra Quinta, which is brilliant. And uh, and I guess every single one of those urbanisations, or what, what do you call them, developments? No, no, I guess. urbanisations is uh, the right word. Um, they all have their own story about how they started and some of them are fascinating but I won't get into all the drama right now. Yeah, there's a lot of history there um, and actually mine was built by a good friend of mine's father back in the day so yeah, it's quite quite interesting. But Is that yeah. how you found the place? No, no, not at all. We actually came 11 years ago, lived in, my, my wife um, lived in Vardegrau, which is okay. just, just next door to us 
and then we we rented an apartment and then bought you know just up the road so yeah we haven't really moved very far <laughs> but why would we we're five five minute walk to the beach it's a fantastic location nick <laughs> That's the beauty of this area is everything is just so connected and they've built this amazing boardwalk so you can actually connect everything really quite easily. Brilliant, huh? Yeah. It's how I even get to work in Faro. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, well, we can talk about that a bit later. Huh? Work it. Work it. Everything is out. But um, I was going to say, so yeah. you've been here before? Yeah, ma'am. Quite come here quite a lot. It's a bit of a local hangout. Um, oh yeah. Largely because of the, I mean, this open space is great for kids to run around. But um, they've got a little playground at the back, yeah. Yeah. But um, it's a sports hub, and obviously with my athletic physique, um, <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, come you were, here a lot in, well, in principle to eat and drink. Did you play rugby as a prop? Uh, yeah, I, I was actually a hooker. Huh? You know. Um, so if you just look over there, I mean, there's actually uh, rugby training grounds. I think the uh, Ireland yeah. team's actually here right now. They are right now they are they are this this place is generally built on the of four sports teams okay. um the, you know all this they've got the watchtowers and do everything and then um they bought a i think a hotel actually called magnolia which supports oh, right. supports this so is that where the teams all stay up in the magnolia? i believe so oh, right, right. yeah and then they've got the, the tennis courts paddle courts and i think they've now actually put indoor ones so uh yeah it's a pretty cool place oh, you, know. you can play some paddle here sometime yeah i'll, I'll come and watch <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I'm back in the car and I'm just heading up the road to go and meet Susanna, who's a local real estate agent around here and she's been working this area for a long time. She's actually originally South African as well um, and we're going to chat to her about how much houses cost and things like that around here because uh, it's quite a different value proposition to the rest of Portugal. see you Susanna. <laughs> Good to see you too. <laughs> Thanks so much for taking the time to um, chat to me a little bit about Quinta Lago. Thank you for asking. Yeah, no, it's cool because it's such an interesting part of the world. I think when we look at the, the other parts of Portugal, obviously the price um, value proposition here is a whole lot different, Brian. I mean, there's some clients of mine that kind of say, um, we love Portugal, but this area is completely like not part of it really and um, yeah it's just everything is different here the services the infrastructure price value um, in terms of property um, yeah it's just a completely different ball game to the rest of what may be reality mm -hmm. yeah. so it's like a little little bubble but it's almost like got its own economy completely hasn't oh, it totally so, it, but yeah. it you know People come here to escape uh, everything or to kind of, you know, charge up, recharge and uh, there's always plenty of sunshine. So, mm. you know, what better, what better place? I was watching last night, I was doing some research for this and I was watching Dennis O'Brien, obviously the owner of, he's the, is he the, he's the owner of the yeah. whole Quinta de Lago. And he said on his, on his videos, as he comes into the queue roundabout over here, it just feels all his worries leave him. And it's just that smell of the pines and, you know, like getting into... So it's a beautiful place. I mean, I've spent a lot of time this morning walking around it. But just from a, like a basic sort of stat point of view, what kind of house prices are we looking at? Like top end to the bottom end? I mean, can you get something from okay. the bottom end? So, I mean, look, over the last uh, 10 years or so, property prices have uh, increased over 60%. Wow. Yeah, which yeah. is a lot. Um the biggest problem here is that there hasn't really been a lot of development 
uh, the restrictions are really quite severe. So, you know, there's not a lot of inventory around. Um, mm. It's very limited. People who have houses don't have something to replace, even if they are willing to sell. So, you know, it's been hard to convince people to sell and then they've got to find something else. Usually the conversation is, oh, okay, um, market's strong. I'll be interested in having a conversation. What else can I get? Um, so, yeah. It's challenging, but yeah. it's part of the, you know, part of what makes it all the more interesting, really. You've got to really find something um, suitable. Um, so I, I read that average price is 4.4 million in Quintalaga. Mm. Is that about right? Well, yes. I mean, apartments in Quintalaga, you're, you're going to be around um, half a million. And well, it's like one bedroom apartment. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know. So that's <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I suppose, and there's nothing below half a million. That's the entry level, I guess. Uh, yeah, more or less, more oh. or less. Um, it does depend within the area and how the age of the property as well. That does make a difference, of course, right? Mm -hmm. And well, um, there's just been a new record bro broken in Kinto of over twenty million. So wow. yeah, that's amazing to it see. Is. It is. Oh. It really, really is. And it was a very specific house as well. So it's just great for for. Obviously, the agents involved and mm -hmm. everybody, you know, that's um, all the owners and the whole development itself sure. and etc. It's wonderful, really. It's great. But I mean, breaking these records, I mean, you look at, um, I watch this guy on YouTube called Ryan Serhat. It's classic. He does like 150 million apartments. You know? Drama. Drama, exactly. <laughs> a big time. And um, obviously, there's, there's ceilings. There's no limit, is there? I mean, this could just carry on getting more and more yeah. and more expensive. Well, it's so unique, first and foremost. There is no other Quintalago. You know, mm. there's lots of similarities, perhaps, but this is truly unique. You know, Quintalago invests in Quintalago, and that's what makes huge difference, really. The quality of the infrastructure and the services provided here in Quintalago are next to none. It is really super unique. Mm. And I suppose then there's just X amount of property and then that's, that's right. you can't make any more. So exactly, you can't, go. that's it. Mm. Within the, the master plan of the area, you've got designated plots, mm. uh, designated land for development and that's it. What about outside Kinderlago? Like, um, we're staying tonight in Verandas de Lago. Right, which has also gone up in price tremendously, it? yes. Yeah. Well, it, of course, it always has a wave effect on everything else, you know, as... Um, when people do cash in on a good market and they go elsewhere, they're obviously prepared to pay a higher price for uh, better value for money. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and this is very much what's happened. You know, areas all around... Oh, first of all, we're right by the sea as well. Everybody wants to be close to the coast, right? So, yeah, location is really important. And then you've... Well, we've also seen little areas um, that weren't so... Um, you know, sought after or it weren't so favorable that I've now all of a sudden become really like the spot to be. Like mm. for, if I just mentioned Quinta de Salinas, for example, yeah. was a lovely little small development, you know, quite quiet and etc. Then Quintalago built a bridge connecting the two, really a, a walkway. I mean, you can live in Salinas and literally just walk across to Quinta. Amazing, so, yeah. so you at a much different price bracket, you're literally right there, yeah. you know, so... Yeah, my buddy Nick lives there, just, I've just had lunch with him, oh, and right. we were talking about Quinta de Salinas as well, so it's a, yeah, it's an amazing place. Obviously, yeah. he's happy, because his, his house price must of be going course. through the roof. Yeah. Uh, but everybody, you know, all over the world, well, you ask just about to say all over Portugal, but everybody all over the Portugal, all over the world, it's just been phenomenal. Who would have, you know, uh, in hindsight, of course, but now... Mm. Who would have even predicted um, what what happened? This major change in lifestyle. So you know we see a lot of um, people who coming in, and they're not really looking for that holiday home anymore. They're looking for a home that they can use as much as possible. Not necessarily a permanent home, mm -hmm. but somewhere where they can come and live like most of the year through. And then they can work remotely, obviously, from there. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So there's a complete change. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I've been doing this a long time, as you know. So, um, you know, the, the, it was very much a, a holiday destination. And the infrastructure was just for that, really. Mm. But now things have changed. There's been new businesses open. Uh, businesses open by 
you know, part almost full time residents here and all sorts of it's just grown. It's wonderful, much bigger community. That's the great thing because yeah. I used to feel like 10, 15 years ago, I came down to Quinta Laga and it feels like an empty shell because mm. there's no one there. It's just all these holiday houses. But you're right, there's much more community. I mean, just been down for lunch all around and there's yeah. so many more people around and it's what January now. Yeah, totally, exactly. So you see, it's the seasons almost run into each other. Mm. Um, and yeah, I mean, who would have thought we have to book a table for dinner in January? That's crazy. I better start booking. We've got to go out for dinner tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, Susanna. It's really lovely to chat to you. And, uh, Thank you very appreciate much. Appreciate your time. All the best. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Now we have to do that all again because I didn't press the cord. <laughs> ah, just kidding. This is the Casa Velha restaurant, which is um, currently closed. But this is where it all started back in the day. In 1972, it was rebuilt from an old abandoned farmhouse. And this was where Quinta de Lago actually started. When you get to the top, you'll be able to see some fantastic views of, you know, down Quinta Lake, which was built then. Also the bridge, which is built over to the beach. Um, and the golf courses, 27, hole golf, 27 holes of golf course, which were built back in those days. I think it was three years after that. So the 1970s was all happening. And then the revolution happened in 1974. So it was... It was a difficult time. The government took over the whole of Quinta de Lago for a while. Um, the owner of Quinta de Lago had to go to Brazil, so it was just a difficult time. But it turned out really well. whipped up to Lule quickly to go and pick up my daughter Isabella from school and I just was hanging around in this beautiful little place I, I spent some time in called Martinique Cafe on the Avenida which is great and then we're going to go back down to go and have a little walk along the boardwalk as you can see we've got Isabella I just want to go and pick her up from school <laughs> and it's lovely to have you back on the videos my darling thanks dad oh, shame you're not feeling so well are you no I'm just a little sick I'll be fine <laughs> just a cold nothing covid -y. Um, we're going to try and find a really good spot to watch the sunset. Awesome, let's go. So this is the start of um, a long, long walk. You can actually walk from here all the way to Faro Airport um, and to Faro Island, which is quite amazing. But I don't think we're going to do that today, are we, Izzy? No, not today. Huh. But you can see all these restaurants lined up here. So there's a whole bunch of restaurants right around here. Let me just explain quickly. So starting from the east, we've got Gigi's restaurant, which is the end of the pier um, of Quinta de Lago, end of the bridge, actually. Then there's the Bold Octopus, Doge Passos, Ancao Beach Club. And then there's this whole cluster where we're going to go and have a drink with Izzy's and Julia's and stuff. I'll explain that a little bit later. And Maria's on the left there, which is a part of Dunas Dorado. just thought, well, you know, we better turn back because Izzy's not feeling that sick, so... Izzy's so, I mean, not feeling that sick? She's not feeling that well. <laughs> so I was like, well, well, that's a bit of a stupid thing to come and walk, and it's a bit cold here, so we're going to go and snuggle up in the, in the heat, and we'll see in a bit. <laughs> so this cluster of restaurants around Val do Garão, or Praia do Garão, starting from the, on the far right-hand side, it's called Dunes, it used to be called Finns over there, Then this is Eduardo's Beach Club, or Paradise Beach Club, and then Antonio's restaurant, 
which is great for fish and everything and then Izzy's which is fantastic for live music and that's where we're going to go and um, it's great for live music on Sunday afternoons and then just a little bit further on here is Julia's restaurant so it seems like everybody has to call their name uh, the restaurant after a name of the owner (laughs) it's pretty crazy Nice to see you, man. Good to see you. Again, twice in one day. Twice in one day. What an honor. You worked today? No. When last were you down here? Oh, it's been ages. And it is your namesake. I know. I should be here every week, Dad. <laughs> What's keeping you busy these days, man? I know you, you, wait, you had that development in Faro, right? I remember you, you telling me about it, the shipyard. I'm now based in Faro. So I live here, as, as we talked about earlier, and in Quinta Salinas, and travel to Faro. Um, we're building 32 apartments uh, in the city center. So yeah, pretty cool project to be working on. Nice. And um, so there, are there still some available? Yeah, we've got a few available. Um, we sold generally off plan thus far. Completion date at the end of the year. And uh, yeah, we've still got a few available for those who are looking. Is this part of like a series of developments that you're working on, or is it? Yeah, I think it's. I think it's more of a long-term vision, really. That, that Faro and I mean, you know, the Algarve and the tourism is crazy and booming. Um, but we think that there's a much larger scene to be happening for more the the corporate and relocation side of things. Um, and therefore, you know, with jobs need houses, and with you know, houses need jobs. So we're in that sort of wonderful mix of trying to bring more new innovative developments to the, the city itself uh, from a residential angle and then where we can we'll support the office growth as well. Brilliant. Cheers guys. It's getting busy here. Oh, you too, man. Thanks a lot. <laughs> so now we have to go try and catch up with my wife. And then, if I get in the car, and then we can go for dinner. We have to go. Oh, let's go. You know me. Okay. And look who's here. The wife. Hello, wife. Hello. <laughs> going to Bovino's. Yes, I've never been to Bovino's in my life. Okay. Me neither. Have you? Oh, yes. Mum's very fancy. It's lovely. She always goes out and I never know where she goes. <laughs> what are these fancy sort of business lunches or something? Uh, yes. No, she's going out with her boyfriend. Ah. <laughs> okay, cool. Let's go to Bovino's. All right, let's go. Excuse me. Excuse. <laughs> I think we might have to turn off the lights, kids. You got the keys, no? Let's just put on the navy. Thanks, Bernard. Bernard. That was a fantastic cocktail. Eh? Okay, guys, I'll go get the car, okay? Okay, good. Thanks, Dad. Hey, was that a good, n- good meal? Fantastic. No, really, was it? No, very really. good. No, really? Did you give it four <laughs> out of five, three out of five, <laughs> four out of five? Five out of five. Five out of five. Service amazing. Amazing service. Six out of five. All right. That's classic. As a, life's very different down here because as I'm sipping my morning coffee, you just hear the growl of a Ferrari in the background. So it's very different to the putt-putt of a tractor up where I live. 
I could go on and on about Kinder de Lago. And actually, we went out for breakfast and everything. And But the thing is, this video has gone to 30 minutes. And if you're still watching, well, congratulations. You deserve a medal. Thank you very, very much. I really appreciate it. Just comment with a thumbs up. I'd love to see that. Um, so thank you so much. I hope you got a good overview of Quinta del Lago. Um, it's quite an interesting area. You know, there's so many different videos I like to make all about these different areas. And there's so many areas that I haven't made. So, And also I like to go back to these old areas that I've made before because and, and, they've changed a lot. So keep on watching. And if you want to see a list of all the videos I've made in the Algarve, just check out algarveaddicts.com forward slash videos. Thanks again for watching. Algarve Addicts.com